Hello and welcome to the derivation video okay, of the root mean square voltage. So this is an extra bonus video. We'll be using calculus skills like uh, what and how to find expected values. So if you want or you, are cons or if you care about this, go come along with the ride. So just a reminder that I have already recorded a video to explain to you uh, what we're trying to achieve here, whereby we are trying to relate the uh, root mean square current in a DC circuit on the right. So this one is DC. We're trying to relate this uh, DC circuit to the AC current on the left. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start off with the fact that uh, for this to work, they should be the same power output or they should have the same output energy. Lah, okay. So I will start with that. I will say that the power of the AC or the mean power of AC will be equal to, I'm just going to write this to remind us, will be equal to the uh, power in the DC circuit. DC have no mean power. It makes no sense. It will have a consistent voltage, so it shouldn't need to have a mean power. I'm also going to use the equation P is equal to I square R. Okay, obviously. So in this side here, the uh, this will be the expected value. Okay, so if you do stats, you will be able to appreciate what I mean by the expected value of I square R. Okay, and this one would just simply be I RMS square times R. So the expected value of I square R or the average of this one, actually the R and R is constant, right? Because if you want to find the expected value of I square, so let's say now I'm just going to put E bracket I square. Okay, this R I can take out because the R is a constant. Common resistor. Ma. And because of this, I can cancel off. So we arrive to the relationship that the expected value of I square will be equal to the root mean square current squared. You square the root mean square. You square already, you find the average, then you square root, then you square again. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we're going to continue. We have a general equation for I, right? Remember? I is equal to I naught sine omega t. So I'll put inside, I'm trying to find the expected value of I naught sine omega t squared. So I guess we got we gotta we gotta add a square. Ooh, this is spicy. How do you find the expected value of sine square? Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, first things first, we will take out the constants. So this will be I naught. Expected value of sine square omega t. So, of course, you could use the relationship where you use integration or you integral and you find the bound. But I'm like, I'm just going to use trigo identity because it's faster, right? I'm going to use a double angle equation, cos 2 theta. That's why the sine square graph looks like a cos 2, cos graph. Think about it. This sine square graph, then don't you think it looks like a cos graph? The shape? Wish. Kind of. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Cos square graph, but translated upwards. Okay, so we will use the identity cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta. Okay, I'm, re I'm substituting sine square. So sine square theta will be equal to uh, half bracket 1 minus cos 2 theta. So I will substitute this into the equation. Sine square theta is equal to half 1 minus cos square cos 2 theta. I will substitute this inside sine square theta. So what I'll get now is, okay, so you can see I have already uh, highlighted what I wanted to substitute. Sine square theta or sine square omega t can be put inside here. So the equation now will look like I naught expected value of half bracket 1 minus cos 2 theta 
and then the other side is still I RMS because we're trying to find RMS. Okay, looks a little bit, hmm, but we can throw out the constant, right? Because half is still a constant and the expected value of a constant is that constant. Lah. Like the expected value of four is still four. Okay, so it will break out the half and then what you have now is the expected value of one. Just going to put this in a big bracket. Minus the expected value of cos two theta. Okay, so what essentially what I did here was I have taken out the half. This half I put outside. Okay, and then now I'm looking for expected value of one minus expected value of cos two theta. This will be equal to I RMS squared. But good news, guys, the expected value of cos two theta is equal to zero. How do I know? Uh? Just like the expected value of sine is zero. Remember in the first video where I spent so much time explaining to you that the expected value of sine or cosine, they are all zero because they are cyclic, cyclic functions. So because the function will cycle, everything here will cancel everything here. Even for cos, because cos will look like this. Uh, see, they cancel everything. What? It's a repetitive, uh, symmetrical, and every value on top here will have a similar value below here and cancel everything out. So what you have now is um, this will be I naught over 2. So I'm just going to write this one as 0. So I will have I naught over 2. What is the expected value of 1 times 1? This is equal to I RMS squared. So hence, wait, uh, is there a square missing? Yes, my I naught square is missing. My bad. Let me put it back. Ah, there we go. Okay. So there's a square here. Okay, uh, because the square is for both I naught and sine. So this will be I naught square, sine square, omega t. I naught square, I naught square, I naught square. So hence, we can then say that I naught square over 2 is equal to I RMS square. Okay, and from here, I RMS is equal to I naught. You bring up your square root both sides, ma, taking square roots from both sides. So this will be I naught over root 2. Proven. So we are using some statistical method to do this. So I use a few steps. Okay, number one, I looked at the definition and I understand that I'm looking for the expected value of I square. I square takes the form of I naught sine omega t. So when I square this thing, I naught become I naught square, which is a constant that I can take out, and sine becomes sine square. I could integrate this, I guess, but I would like to not do so. So here's a trick. The trick here is I use double angle identity because I know cos the expected value because I'm trying to use or leverage on this. Lah. The expected value of cos x is zero. Unless you bound x to less than one cycle, then it's not zero. So if for repeated cycle, like in this case, the AC will keep repeating, 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 the expected value for cos x is zero. The expected value of sine x is also zero. So I'm trying to find any kind of uh, shape or form like cos 2, two theta will be zero. That way, you remember zero is my favorite number because it cancels out. So I substitute sine square omega t with the equation 1 minus cos 2 theta. I guess if you don't want to use theta because, you know, theta is equal to omega t. You could also replace this by omega t. No? Okay, la, but I already wrote theta, so I'm just going to keep this one here, okay? And to be a good math student, I will write at the side. Theta is omega t. Alright, so I'm looking for sine square theta, which is substituted inside here. Okay, hopefully you've watched the video about why this theta is omega t. So this will be 2 theta. Theta is here. Okay, omega t, theta. So once I substitute 1 minus cos 2 theta, because I rearrange a bit, I'm substituting sine square theta. 
So sine square theta is half bracket 1 minus cos 2 theta. So 1 minus cos 2 theta is here. And once that is done, I can immediately replace this cos 2 theta, the expected value, at 0. Leaving for me the expected value of half, or if I take out the half, then the expected value of 1. Expected value of 1 is 1. Right? Isn't that true? The expected value of 1 is 1. So because of that, there this expected value of 1. Okay, there this expected value of 1 is equal to 1. Okay, so then after that, it's just a matter of rearranging to get uh, root mean square current is i not over root 2. So this is a proof, lah, a variation of the proof using trigo without using integration. Okay, so if you're interested, great. We need a lot of maths for the physics equation to make sense. There's this thing called the hunch. Like by hunch, I know that the area will cancel out based on the first video. But here, our hunch is proven using derivation. So if you find this meaningful, let us know. Uh, we like rec making this further physics video to further your knowledge and also to show you uh, various ways that physics can take. La. It can be very pure maths driven. It can be very uh, uh, application driven, like for example, the MRI videos. All right. So let us know what you think. I hope this is helpful. Like and subscribe and also ask questions. Keep asking them. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.